I was on set the other day, a DP pulled out one of these, literally a laser, and it was so easy for us to understand what she wanted, so I had to pick one up, and you guys already know, it's gonna go into my AKS case. Alright, so I don't know what I'm making. Yeah, I've been thinking about this and I feel like I might just need to post more content and that's kind of like the hardest part. It's hard to get organized and sometimes I don't know what I'm gonna make a video about or what to capture. So I'm just winging it right now. I've been in the middle of doing some pre-production for an actual like narrative series that I kind of have in mind, but I have to go to Ensenada to really connect with the people that I need to. So I was debating on doing that today I might do it this week. I have one day of work. Now, this is the freelance life, all right? Um, I might look super busy, but this week I only have one day confirmed. And it was actually a double booking, so I'm subbing some work out to a buddy of mine, um, which is like my associate shooter, and that's kind of the goal. Keep it more internal or see how we can work together, right? Um, but yeah, so let's jump back into some editing and I'll bring you guys throughout my day. So one really cool thing that I did over the weekend was I went thrifting and I found like four of these super old CCD cameras. And these things are so cool because the, the images out of these aren't, I mean, this is eight megapixels. The other one's like five megapixels or so. They're not the biggest high def, but it's so cool to have a small point and shoot that has some film characteristics. What's up guys? Um, I don't know if you guys can hear me, got the new iPhone, yeah. Uh, Suchi to Verizon, so see yeah, how that goes. But anyways, it is now, I can't see the time. It's about 6 a.m.-ish. Been on the road for like maybe 30 minutes. And I'm going to the art district to shoot a music video with a buddy of mine. Um, now this one's very, very running gun, that's what we said, but then we started talking about equipment and I brought my follow focus and everything. Hoping I don't have to pull it out just so we're not running with a huge rig. Um, I stripped out my FX6. I don't like going to LA that often because it's far and the only thing that will take me to LA is one, money, and two, uh, I'm working with someone that I'm really cool with or I'm on a super interesting and fun project. That's the only reason why I would go to LA. I think I've been going about like once a month at this point to LA. It's funny because I say I don't go to LA, but yeah, like once a month I'm getting gigs over there. Um, and that's fine with me. It's been good. I know the next three days I'm on a commercial that I don't know if I can bring you guys, but I'll keep you guys updated. I bought the cheap one though, so it squeaks. You know? Don't buy the cheap one. <laughs> you know? All right, so we came to Pro 8 millimeter, looking for Super 8. Uh, hopefully they have some. Hey. Let's talk about how to balance a gimbal. Now this was the RS2, which you so much easier ever since they invented the locking mechanisms. So literally, you want to lock all the axes, and you're going to start with the tilt. They are all going to have different names, I honestly do not remember them. Uh, but here you can see, the camera has to balance out both looking straight on and looking up. Once that's balanced, you then unlock the next portion, which you're gonna see if the camera is either too much to the left or to the right, you'll see it. You have to, um, you know, adjust it accordingly. And then you unlock the third one and you lift the camera and kind of try to see how much it rolls if you lean one side or the other. And once it doesn't roll too much, you've got a pretty good gimbal balance. Also, pro tip, I just figured out that there are these wing nuts in the 
RS2 and all this time I thought my gimbal didn't tighten well I hated it but I guess you just use the wing nut pull the lever turn it and you're able to get more um, leverage on it you can tighten it even more I did not know that and I've been shooting on gimbals for a while comment down there if you already knew that and I just somehow never learned it <laughs> Present. Yo. It's not every day that I get to be on a commercial set or shooting some documentary stuff. Sometimes I take corporate gig because corporate gigs pay very well. Uh, and I've been working with this lawyer group for about a year and I got this because of a referral. So yeah guys, don't stop taking corporate work because they can definitely pay you very well. Every time I go to work and I'm on set, I work with different tools, I realize there's a lot of things out there that make my job easier. And sometimes you just realize you need other things just to continue getting hired or you know be ready when you're working so i saw some apertures that were on sale and i i, I got a couple of things that i know are going to help out my kit and you know be able to expand my knowledge and what i can offer first off i got a 60x now why did i want a 60x it's a tiny light not really powerful uh, but the only thing that drew me to it was the Cytus link. I bought the Moza 200 and I will be making a review on it eventually, hopefully. Um, and it's an amazing light, tiny bicolor, uh, but it does not connect to Cytus. So I wanted something that was Cytus compatible because sometimes when I rig that hair light, which funny enough, it happened to me. I was literally on a pretty big shoot, I'd say. Um, it was a documentary kind of style shoot for a pretty big client and uh, I threw a hair light and uh, I had to adjust it but the hair light was really high it was a really wide frame and I realized I need Cytus for this because I don't want to be in a big professional set and everyone has to wait for me to lower the light or you know go to the control when I can just have it on my phone those little things that make you look more legit or like you know you're ready for it baby am i in frame can you see on this color frame yeah. is my hand still in frame yeah. this is a hand grip rosette adapter for the sony fx6 uh, i've been shooting a lot more things handheld and i've been trying to get it on my shoulder but i don't have a shoulder rig which i decided to invest into one i've got a pretty cheap one from matilda i'm still waiting on it but I need a controller for my grip and this will allow me to reset because the cable is pretty short on the FX6. And then again, another thing where I've been on set a couple times and I need to throw my camera on my shoulder. I need that stability and I don't have it. This is what I'm most excited about. This is the Spotlight SC. Um, it's kind of annoying that Aperture, I'm sure they thought about this or maybe it was an engineering problem, but they have a spotlight by Aperture, but it doesn't work with all their Amaran lights. Like you can see the LEDs, you can just, it's just, it's weird. Um, so I wanted a second spotlight because it's happened to me where I want that second light and I have to make something up with flags to cut the light or something. This will allow me to now use all my smaller lights and be able to use a spotlight for it. Hence be able to have two spotlights on set. This is like, four packets that I bought within the week, but I didn't get any chance to open any of them because I was on set all week. Thank God. Can't complain about having work, of course. So I've been shooting some film and I kind of want to get more film work because I know it's a niche thing where niche niche. It's a thing where people will pay people that know how to shoot film to shoot film and commercials and stuff. And I want to have that in my resume basically. So here's just some rolls of film and uh, I keep forgetting keep forgetting about some film and I'm trying to like move them around and I end up spooling all the film back in and I need something to pull it out. So I got this uh, film retriever whenever I mess up because it's happened too many times and it's almost impossible to do it while you're on set or just carry more film, I guess. What I'm pretty excited about, Super 8 film. I've been getting a kick out of this. I've been trying to shoot more Super 8 because again, one of those things where it's pretty niche not many people do it and sometimes people want that on their spots and I want to be able to offer that. I know zero people in the San Diego area that shoots Super 8, shoots it professionally rather than just for hobbies. So I'm trying to meter everything and make it look like a million bucks. Everything I buy, I buy for a reason. I try to not buy things that I don't need or just cuss. Um, so I have a music video coming up and uh, we want to make it more of a styled look. 
Wow, this bought this from Japan. This is packed so professionally. We're doing a car mount and we need a really wide lens and my kit only went up to 25. I have the 25, 35, 50 and 85, which is a pretty solid kit, but I do not have a much wider, wider. Wow, this looks so pristine. Wider lens. Yeah, this is, oh, this is actually the macro one. I bought two lenses and this, I got the macro because I was shooting a short film and sure enough, we wanted to get a close up of like an eye or something like that. And I couldn't achieve it with my lenses. So I figured I'll invest into the macro because macros tend to come very handy. Look at this packing. So solid. Nice. They even gave me a little carrying case. Oh, and it has a nice, nice cover. So this is the one I got. This is an 18 millimeter F4. And I, it's just because I'm going to need a really wide angle because we're shooting through a car window. Um, and we wanted to get both seats in the frame. So this is going to be perfect for it. So yeah, two lenses, some film stuff and a bunch of other things that I need for work.